What's up guys? Welcome back to the Esther Effect. My name's Georgia if you're new and this is Shanna Armbrust. She is a special guest today because this summer, she this past summer, right? You wrote this? Like over the last year. Oh, the last year. She had written this book and in the summer I had come back to go back to LCU and she had was talking to people about it and I was like, Shanna, I need to read your book. I need to get your book. And so it was only like, I'd say in the last two months, I actually got it. Um, and I ended up reading it super fast. And I just really wanted to, I loved the book so much and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, it's called Shaba Letters. I can put it, let me see it. And it's called Writing to an Invisible God is kind of the the tagline. Subheading. Subheading. <laughs> tagline. <laughs> yes. So I just wanted to share it with you and I wanted to have Shanna come on here and just speak a little bit about it and maybe inspire you to read it too because it really impacted me and we'll get into that. Um, because I have a lot of questions for her and I wanted to share it with you. So Shanna, if you just want to take it away and just tell us a little bit about your book and the Lord in your book and your heart and... Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I wrote a book. Yeah, the Lord spoke to me to be an author and I believed him and I just started writing everything down for like 10 years because I had no idea what the book was going to be about. I just knew that um, it would have something to do with my journal entries because that's what he spoke to me because I was writing um, in my journal and I was like, why am I writing this? As, mm -hmm. as if like thousands of people are gonna read yeah. my book or re read my journal and he's like, it's cause you will, like you're gonna be an author and people will read what you write in your journals. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Did you write this that in here? Um, I think I did. Okay, it might be in the intro or something mm -hmm. like that of how yeah. this book came to be. So mm -hmm. it's essentially a book um, of 10 years of growing in intimacy and relationship wow. with the Lord. So in the beginning, it's like super flaky. And then eventually it turns into this beautiful, deep relationship with Jesus of just growing um, in intimacy and what that mm -hmm. really looks like. Because I think that we have examples of what it can look like from a stage. Like you look at your pastor, your favorite preacher, and you're like, wow, how on earth did they get there? Yeah. Like they mm -hmm. don't always show weakness. And it's mm -hmm. like, how do I... I I'm not like that. Right. So this, it reveals all of the process of mm -hmm. the good, the bad, and the really, really ugly. Mm -hmm. um, and just showing like how human we are and mm -hmm. how Jesus walks with us through our weakness and through um, things that we walk through and how um, it actually turns into a deeper, I guess, relationship with him through the things mm -hmm. that we go through. So it reveals a lot of things in, in the heart of, I guess, a woman. But yeah. That's pretty much it. And it kind of, not just a woman, but yeah. it could be... For a guy, too. Yeah, for it sure. could be for a guy, too. It's very versatile, like... Yeah, because... I know guys who have read it, and they're like, that wrecked me! Mm -hmm. <laughs> See? Yeah, like, it's amazing, and I love because it's... I love it because it's so real, and you get to see where she's, like, so intimate, and so real and raw and you get to see not just like what you said like not just the preacher that's got has it all together but you're reading a book where it's like ups and downs and roller coaster rides and you get to like you're like oh my gosh that's me too like lord fix me you know like the whole time it's like jumping into someone's brain yes because it's not written from the point of view of like this is how you can do it and this is all the steps to how you grow in relationship yeah. but it's literally from like a the first person point of view and mm -hmm. it's just all the things that you think in your head that you would never say out loud because you'd never be brave enough to do it yeah and it's yeah. all written down and it mm -hmm. makes you probably gonna make you feel like wow I'm not crazy yes mm -hmm. <laughs> I've gone through that <laughs> I'm not crazy yeah. but it shows the um the after like the after side too of like oh like it does get better like yeah. God does show up God is faithful but in the moment when you are thinking that you're going through something you're like clearly no one's ever gone through this yeah and um, it definitely feels that way yeah but she shows the other side you know coming so, out on the other side mm -hmm, of it mm -hmm. which is so good and I think it brings a lot of hope and no matter what season you're in I feel like you can relate 
if you're in this really high season where you're hearing the Lord and you're like crazy encounters are happening, like you'll be able to relate. And if you're going through maybe like a dry season or they say we shouldn't have dry seasons, but you know, the wilderness season is real and you do walk through that, but Jesus went through a wilderness season too. But anyways, <laughs> well, I have some questions. Um, thank you, Shanna, for sharing that with yeah. us. Just kind of like a synopsis. You yeah, know, thanks for having this. me. I'm yeah. having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> me too. Okay, so I have a few questions. So if you guys want to come with, what would you say like makes your book unique from like maybe other books that you've seen or that you've read that what kind of was like, is there anything like from the Lord or like that was just different? I mean, obviously it's unique because you wrote it mm -hmm. and there's nobody that has your exact experiences and has your exact encounters with the Lord. Nobody can replicate that. But beyond that, you know, what would you, what, yeah, yeah. what's something that? I would say um, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, vulnerability because as we were talking about before, we can have the example, we could read a million books on like, yeah. this is how you overcome this and like, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And it's all like, it, for me, when I read those books, I'm like, yes, it's empowering, but I feel like sometimes like I'm not there. Like I don't mm -hmm. know, like I feel excited about it. Like I, that could be my life, but you don't see the process of yeah. how that actually came to be. So I would say the vulnerability of when God speaks to you something, like I think everyone wants to hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like everyone 100%. wants to hear from mm -hmm. him. If you know, if it's possible, like yes, I want it. Mm -hmm. So it's like hearing those things and being like, Yeah, God spoke to me, but also all the questions that come through your mind after he speaks to you. The yes. doubts, the fears, oh the gosh. insecurities, yeah. the all of that stuff mm -hmm. that you don't really talk about mm -hmm. because it's like, well, God spoke to me. And, yeah, uh, so I'm you should gonna, have it. I'm going to go know? for it. But yeah. it's like, ah, I feel like a mess. Yeah. I, have, yes. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. So it's kind of like that. All the vulnerability that comes okay. with following Jesus yeah. that you don't see. It's so true, though. It's so true. I read the book, so... <laughs> Before you ever went anywhere and you told your your younger self self you'll go and do all these things and go all these places um, Do you think that you would believe yourself that you would go do all these things and see these people and have these crazy encounters and experiences? No <laughs> Absolutely not. Why? I never would have guessed because I didn't know that any of this stuff was even possible with the mm -hmm. Lord. Like, I I knew Jesus. I, you know, became a Christian when I was 16. I knew God existed. Mm -hmm. I loved the Lord. Um, but I didn't know about the prophetic. I didn't know about encounters with God. I didn't mm -hmm. know even really about intimacy. So, um, if I were to look back 10 years ago and be like, all of the things that happened to me in this book, like, I had no idea it was mm -hmm. even possible. So... Yeah, I wouldn't have believed it. I would have wanted to believe it, though. Yeah. Because I would have been like, whoa, if that's possible, I want it. Mm -hmm. But I never thought that would be my life. I was like, oh, I want to get, you know, married at 22 and have kids by 23, 24 and just have a normal life. And I have had anything but a normal life. Yeah. So it's been um, everything but that. <laughs> yeah. What would you say to someone that maybe maybe would want to do. It's one thing, you know, the Lord is calling you, so there, that definitely has to be the main thing, like if the Lord is calling you to do these things. But I'm sure there's someone watching that is like, I would love to go and to just impact the world around me, kind of like what, you're, what you do in your book. You go mm -hmm. all over the world, you know, the Lord is calling you. And so what is something you would say to someone just to encourage them or you know what would you say to someone that feels like they could never do what you did just like you couldn't you didn't feel like you could but yeah. then the Lord called you and he provided everything and he made a way for you to go and he like how you know someone that maybe feels right yeah what would you say so I think for me at least as you can see throughout the whole book it's like the theme of saying yes mm -hmm. like if God calls me yes if he wants me to do something, yes. Like, mm -hmm. of course, he has my yes. So I think that um, 
for those who might be listening or watching if you feel that in your heart like i want to go and do things for the lord like not do things for him because we don't do it for him but we do it with him yeah so i want to do things with the lord and i think it's just simple as saying like jesus no matter what you have for me whether it's staying home and taking care of a family mm -hmm. or getting into the workplace or going to school or maybe it's going into missions or traveling all over the world and just obeying his voice whatever that looks like it's just saying jesus whatever you want i'll say yes to it and then when he starts speaking you actually go and do it because we can say Yay! it we can say it and be like oh i'll do anything for you jesus <laughs> anything and then he's like uh move to uh ethiopia and you're yeah. like i don't think i heard you <laughs> oh, right yeah i think maybe i have to fast and pray about that and he's like well i already told you so when he speaks be quick to actually obey what he's saying yeah because do, delayed obedience is actually disobedience mm -hmm. so we want to be quick to follow him and trust me i fail all the time <laughs> i mm -hmm. fail all the time but I know that's it. that's advice i give to myself too of i want to obey him i want to follow him but i need to actually do it follow through yeah so yeah thank you for that that's hey you're really welcome good. how have you grown in the lord most would you say from the timeline of the the beginning of the book to the timeline of the end of the book? Yes, um, I've grown a lot. So the book, it's like a span of essentially 10 years, maybe. Okay. I don't remember the exact, I should know I'm the author, but you know, it just- <laughs> Roughly. You know, we're all in the proper, <laughs> whatever, I don't know. So it's like 10 years. And I, when I started writing it, I think in the beginning chapter, it starts out saying, it's like a journal entry. I think mm -hmm. it's something like, Jesus, yeah. I hate myself. What did mm -hmm. I write? I don't... Oh, yeah. I'm really hurting right now. I feel depressed and worthless. I hate myself. In chapter one. Yeah. Okay. It's like, Jesus, I feel there's disconnected my relationship with you, and yeah. I don't know how to fix it. Yeah. And I think that we all go through those seasons. Yep. Not even a season, but we just go... It may be a moment where it's like, yeah, it I feel disconnected from yeah. the Lord, and I don't know how to fix that. And um, it takes you on a journey. I've been on a journey for like 10 years of like yeah. Jesus fixing that. Like there's no more, dis there's no disconnect. So um, I feel like that's where I've grown most of like going from, I feel disconnected from the Lord to mm -hmm. feeling like I am very much connected to the Lord. And there mm -hmm. might be things that come against me or mm -hmm. moments where I feel down or, you know, yeah. Knowing that it's just a lie rather yeah. than totally embracing something and being yeah. like, I'm worthless. And like I'm taking this. it on. Yeah. yeah. Like being like, no, it's just a lie and just mm -hmm. keep moving forward. But, and also just the intimacy that I share because I didn't have history with the Lord really when I started writing it. I had a few years. I think I was saved maybe like three, four years when I, when I, uh, the Lord called me to be an author. Um, and I started writing everything down, but there was no history with him. So mm -hmm. now I have history. So I know that like if I'm going through something yeah. and there's a trial, like I've seen over the years, like, no, the Lord is faithful. The yeah. Lord provides. He's going to come through for me. Yeah. So it's a, um, he's my anchor. He's everything. I love yeah. that. Thank you. You're welcome. There's a, there's a place in the book where Shanna actually goes to the real garden of Gethsemane in Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And she's there. And she, the setting of the scene was she wanted to go to this exact tree, the exact tree where Jesus, like, was bleeding drops of blood, sweating drops of blood, and he was so anxious. Well, I don't know. He was probably anxious. Probably. You know, to have to go to the cross, and he was just really distraught. Okay, and so she wanted to see the exact tree. Like, I feel like I would want to see the exact tree where he was sweating drops of blood. What were your thoughts at the Garden of Gethsemane and the guy telling you his story? That was like the best day of my whole life. Like <laughs> hands down, it was the best day of my entire life because right before that I was at uh, the Garden Tomb, which is a place where they, it's one of the places where Jesus may have been buried and you know came out of the tomb. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's where it was because of what happened to me there. I had an encounter with the Lord and um, he spoke to me. Wow. He spoke to me during that time um, where I just start crying. Mm -hmm. I was just crying outside the tomb, and, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Shana, they, they mistook me for a gardener. 
and I was like, what? <laughs> like, what is that? Why is that even meaningful right now? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And so then the Lord just, he like smashed me during communion. You have to read it to understand the whole context of what I'm talking about. But he was starts talking to me about the gardener. I'm like, why is this significant? I don't understand why mm -hmm. you're talking to me about this. And it comes from John chapter 20, where Mary came to the tomb and she, um, you know, sees the gardener and, but it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so she mistook him for someone else. And I was talking to the Lord. I'm like, I never want to mistake you. Like, I just, yeah. I just oh want, I want to know you at first glance. Yeah. Like, I just want to know you. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was totally undone just walking to, um, the garden of Gethsemane after that. So I had that encounter with him and then I walked to the garden of Gethsemane and I, I just, as you were talking, um, explaining I my whole life all I wanted to do is go to the Garden of Gethsemane you know since I became a Christian mm -hmm. my Christian life because it's a place where I can most resonate with the Lord of mm -hmm. like wow you had pain there like you were going through things yeah. and that was hard and like I've gone through pain I think you've probably gone through pain too yeah yeah we, we've we all, all have yeah gone through yeah. things and so it's a Jesus that I could touch mm -hmm. and I'm like I want to wow. go there I want to go wow. there and I want to see that place mm -hmm. where that happened and I got there, it's all gated off. And I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Like, this is not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Like, I want I want to see it. I want to touch it. And I was real sad. And I was just walking. And um, I stopped at a, a part of the gate. And I was just kind of resting on it. And all of a sudden, this gardener came out yeah. from behind a tree. And I was like, what? oh, my God. And he comes right up to me. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even know he was there. He came right up to me. And he's like, he's like, um what are you doing here, girl? Like, what are you looking for? What are you searching for? And it reminded me of the questions of John chapter 20 yeah. um, that the gardener had asked or Jesus had asked Mary. And um, I was just undone. It was not Jesus. I knew it was not Jesus. But Jeez. it was like the Lord used that yeah. and all these things. I There's things that happened that I couldn't even put it in the book because the Lord wouldn't let me, but it was mm -hmm. a really special time um where he just blessed me and he showed me because he knew it's not like this is the truth that where it happened but he showed me exactly um where he knows that it happened because he'll see angelic visitation over that tree oh, yeah. early in the morning mm -hmm. he's like i know that's where it is mm -hmm. so um yeah did that answer the question i don't yeah. remember what the well question my was. question was just like um what what were your thoughts when the gardener had come directly to you and like, what are you looking for? Like exactly what oh. Jesus said to Mary. Is there anything that, what your thoughts were? Because when I was reading the book, I was like seeing the interaction between you and the gardener and you wanted to know the tree and then he ended up being there and could tell you yeah. exactly where the tree was. So like, were there any thoughts that you can share? Like, or yeah. Honestly, about... I was like, in unbelief at mm -hmm. first because I'm like no way like this is totally not happening like totally not happening and but at the same time I felt so seen by Jesus because yeah. I'm like you perfectly orchestrated this yeah like, perfectly and I couldn't have made it up so I felt very seen. Um, I, I joke and I say, I'm God's favorite. Like, yeah, literally. We're all, we're all yes, God's we favorite. Are, but I'm like, I mm -hmm. literally believe it. Like, mm -hmm. I really do. Because I didn't yeah. know for the longest time. I didn't know, mm -hmm. like, that other people could hear from God. Like, I just started hearing from God when mm -hmm. I became a Christian. And I'm like, nobody else around me seems to hear him like I do. And mm -hmm. then, so for the longest time, I was like, clearly I'm his favorite. Like, yeah. So mm -hmm. I just walk in it, and then I found out people like Georgia exist, you know? <laughs> she hears God very well. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Well, there's other people. I was kind so. of like, how dare you? You know? <laughs> like, how dare you talk to other people? That's so funny. But I mean, just knowing that reality in your heart is so powerful, mm -hmm. you know? And knowing, like, that you were, that you are, were and are still so seen by mm -hmm. him and, like, that's huge, yeah. you know? Yep. We, we pray that for yes. all of you, everybody watching, yeah. Yeah. That you know that and you experience that in whatever way. For her, it was being at the Garden of Gethsemane, but, like, for you, it could be anything. Whatever the Lord, it's your personal relationship. So I just pray that you experience that as well. And, and reading the book, just seeing Shanna's experience, too, is amazing. <laughs> Can you <laughs> give any advice for dating and ministry yeah thing. I mean you had a lot of ministry and there were a lot of people and 
Yes. Not like saying you dated a lot of people. Yeah, no, I haven't dated a whole lot of people, yes, but, but I've had a lot of heartbreak. Opportunities <laughs> and... Yeah, opportunities. <laughs> um, yeah, so a little about my story. I've been engaged two times, and it sucked. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, it's you terrible. can. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I have had a lot of heartbreak and just learning about the whole ministry thing and in both times it was very prophetic how it kind of unraveled and unfolded and um i can't say that that's it's not a bad thing um mm -hmm. i think that it can totally work and that's fine but honestly my advice is um don't take things so seriously like mm -hmm. a cup of coffee does not mean you're getting married <laughs> And just because, like, you have a dream about someone, it doesn't mean that they're your spouse. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. These are things that I've learned. Yes. <laughs> it's good. It's real. Yeah, it is real. Um, because I think in a prophetic culture, everything yes. can become so prophetic mm -hmm. so quickly. And it's like, well, this happened and that happened and the stars are aligning and everything yes. is just coming oh, together. And clearly goodness. it's the Lord. Yeah. And granted, in, in my experience, like, it at least in one of them, it really, really, really was the Lord, but then things happened and it was not a good situation anymore. So the Lord yeah. removed me from it. Um, he really shielded me, so protected me because he's a good dad. So as much as it was the Lord, it's like people have free will. Free will, yeah. and that's a big part of it. The yeah. Lord was saying yes, but both people have to make the decision. Both people have to have they that have to be committed. yes. Yeah, committed. Yeah. And as much as the Lord is saying yes, there still has to be, like, the choice. Like, we still get a choice. And so if, if someone decides to not make that choice, it's not like the one that, you know, that's the only one person. The Lord will bring someone that is the right person and yeah. that is, you know, perfect for yeah. you. So, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. But Pretty it's well. just a matter of waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Not rushing it, not running too far ahead of Jesus. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, like, I believe, and I'm learning this, is that Jesus wants to be my husband before I'm a wife to someone else. Like, I mm -hmm. need to learn to really be submitted to him and to walk with him. And he teaches me about being a wife, you know? Like, I prepare myself as a bride to be his first. And whether that's my whole life or just for a little bit longer. I mean, it's my whole life. Of course, I'm going to keep following him. But right. um, it, as he has me in a single of season. Yeah. Or s season of singleness. I knew what you meant. <laughs> I, I knew didn't. what you meant. Um, yeah. How can we date well in the Christian world? I really mm. like that question, actually. Um, so something that I've processed with actually some like brothers of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, not my actual Ooh. brothers, but I like, know, yeah, man. Christian it's brothers good. of, you know, what does singleness mm -hmm. look like in Christianity and in the Christian world? Because I think that it can get really weird and just, I think guys get kind of, I don't know the word that I'm looking for, but they they can get timid, I guess, to ask someone out because a cup of coffee in the Christian world often means like, oh my God, he likes me. Mm -hmm. And um, clearly he's, you know, he has plans and there's intentions. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think that we need to throw that whole mindset away and just be okay with being a sister or being a brother. And because if we keep looking at the opposite sex and being like, like, sizing them up and down and being like, oh, well, they have this quality and they have that quality yeah. and maybe we'd be compatible. And it's like you've never actually looked at them as a sibling, as like mm -hmm. a brother or a sister in Christ. You've only seen them for what that they can offer you mm -hmm. rather than like, wow, you're created in the image of God. Like God loves you and you, we are brother and sister in Christ. Yes. And so building that friendship first and mm -hmm. only having the mindset, like such pure mindset of like, I just want to love you as like a brother or sister first and then God can open up any doors after that but that's kind of how I see it but if we come with the intention of like well you know they're not my spouse so you know whatever like, yeah it's just it's really dishonoring yeah and um, you rob yourself of really good friendships with yeah. um, people of the opposite sex so that's kind of how I see it yeah that's yeah. really good though because I think you get to know a friend 
so much different because when you're on this dating it's always like exclusive and it's just you and pressure. them and there's pressure and like do we get married like right away like when do we get married you know because it's, like it's we like, just had a cup of coffee yeah for <laughs> real and so then there's that huge pressure but if it's like friends there's just you get to know them on like a really like you don't have any intention. There's no, like you said, mm -hmm. like there's no agenda. You're just friends. Yeah. And I think, like you'll work through things better. Mm -hmm. Like you'll, you're, you're a friend, and so you're their cheer, cheerleader, like first. Yeah. You know, like you don't want anything from them. You don't need anything yeah. from them. You're just there to be with them, and to do life with them. So, right. I think. That really you could work through more things as well because mm -hmm. again there's no agenda so you know yeah it's like truly learning to love them yeah and like wanting nothing from them in return mm -hmm. except just friendship yeah and yeah and then God can work with that mm -hmm. you know he can make he can open up more doors <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but that's what he does yeah he opens up doors yep and he closes them but he you closes know. a lot of them. But he'll protect you. Yeah. If he's doing that, it's protection. It's true. When God is writing back to you, meaning he wrote, He spoke to you and you wrote them down in your journals, how do you know that it's him? Honestly, um, I'll know that it's him by the way that he says it. Because okay. Jesus is really nice. He's mm -hmm. really, 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 <laughs> really kind. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, if what I'm hearing does not sound like the voice of love or the voice of peace or the voice of compassion, then it's probably not the Lord. Sometimes he'll rebuke you and, you know, like sometimes he really will <laughs> yeah. rebuke me and be like, you need to knock that off, <laughs> like stop it. But, um, but most of the time he's just very sweet. And so I will take it, I'll write it down. And I'm like, okay, this sounds like the Lord. This aligns with scripture. He says this about me. Like, mm -hmm. I believe this. Then it's most likely the Lord. And obviously he can tell me if it's not. Like, yep. sometimes it can be our own soul that can speak. Mm -hmm. um, but if my soul is speaking really good things, then that's, I mean, it's not, my soul is not God's voice. But it's, you know, at least I'm not thinking really bad mm -hmm. things. But, yeah. yeah, so if it's, if it's, if it aligns with scripture, then it's most likely going to be God. I, I agree with that too in my experience as well like I think it'll just sometimes just come out of you mm -hmm. it's almost like it just you're not even saying it but it, it you're like it comes out of you before you can even think right of what the response would be of what you might what you just asked him yeah. you know it's true and like where where you are when you hear it too like if you are just soaking like, in the presence of the Lord yeah. And like you have this thing drop in your heart and yeah. it's like, this sounds like God, this feels like God. I have a lot of peace about this. It's the Lord. But yeah. yeah. So if you're like battling anxiety and like yeah. go your it, posture, feeling like, yeah, and you might not be hearing the Lord correctly all the time, but, mm -hmm. but if you're really with him, then trust what you hear. Yeah. That <laughs> that's good. what I, that's how I think. So your relationship with Jesus in this book is just, is so close. You're so intimate with him. You're so close, like a lover, really. Um, so how did you get like that? And how can we get like that with Jesus? And what can we do? Or do we have to do anything? Or is that just him? Or what, what, how did that happen for you? Yeah, um, I've learned that I really don't have to do very much. Because he wants to be with us way more than we even could fathom or know. So I just show up. Like, I'm like, okay, God, here's my time. Like, here's mm -hmm. my energy. Here's everything that I have to offer. And sometimes it doesn't seem like I got anything accomplished. I'm like, I read three verses. Like, that's all that I, I did. But it's like, we don't have to do anything yeah. to be with him. He just loves that we showed up. So he he loves it when we give him time. Like, for real. He really loves our time. Yeah. Um, he doesn't care how well we pray. He doesn't care how well we preach. He doesn't care. Like, of course, it's, it's great if you're good at those things. But he really just wants your heart. Um, and it doesn't matter what it sounds yeah. like. It doesn't matter how it comes out. 
it doesn't matter how ugly, how messy, how angry you yes. feel. Like, you just mm -hmm. tell Jesus exactly what you're thinking. Like, get on your knees and cry and tell him how yeah. annoyed you are. Be like, I don't like yes. that you did that. Like, you are making me mad. Mm -hmm. And he can handle it because he's God and mm -hmm. um, he loves us. So he's not going to abandon you if you're struggling to, you know, believe him or whatever you're going through. Just be super honest. And then you'll see him show up and you're like, wow, you're actually really trustworthy. So yeah. that's how I've built intimacy mm -hmm. is just vulnerability being really real with him and just showing up even when I don't want to yeah yeah that's so good mm -hmm. I think that's really helpful Amen. yeah just a few more questions so in your book you share how you were filled with this the spirit the holy spirit so how can we do that and can you share how you got filled yes okay so Technically, I got filled with the Holy Spirit the first time in a dream. I woke okay. up speaking in tongues, body on fire. I could not control that. I didn't even know what it was, really. I didn't ask for it. It just happened. And it's, you know, I pray that for all of you. Like, let that let that um, happen. I think I... Yeah, we have your testimony. Yeah, yeah there's so a testimony. I can link it down below, her testimony, yeah. so you can hear the full the story. The full thing, but... Mm -hmm. um, the first time it happened when I was awake, um, I didn't, I wasn't <laughs> expecting it. I didn't go to this person to be like, I would like to be filled with the Holy Spirit, sir. <laughs> like that was not my intention <laughs> so at all. Funny. I didn't even know who this dude was, yeah. but a guy named David Hogan. I don't know if any of you have heard of him. If you Ooh. haven't, look him up. He is fire. Mm -hmm. And I saw him at a conference and I didn't know who he was. And the Lord's like, have him go, uh, go ask that guy to pray for you. And I was like, okay, like don't know who he is. So I just walked right up to him. I didn't know he was the speaker. And oh yeah, cause he looks so normal. Yeah, he's totally just an, like, an average yeah, guy, flannel, like grandpa. Yeah, jeans and super A running normal. shirt. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, he always wears. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just went up to him and I was just striking up conversation. I was like, hey, so um, I feel called all over the world, like preach the gospel, but I don't know where to begin. Like, I feel like you might have some advice on that kind of thing. And he just looks at me and he just, he does the thing. Yeah, and he I was like, thing. I was That's like, so uh, what is this guy doing? Like, so, I was kind of like, what? that would be kind of like, uh, like, and you, especially since you didn't know who he was. Yeah. So you're like, maybe I asked yeah. the wrong person. I'm like, uh, yeah. I was like, what did I get myself into? And he's just like, young lady. It's like the world map is not your problem he's like you you need a starting point and I was like what like I had no idea what he was talking <laughs> about and then he just looked at me and he just blew on me and he didn't touch me nothing it was like from you know three four feet away he blew on me and I just see a flash of lightning and I just fell on the floor and I shook for like two hours maybe longer um, and it was at the front of the state, like the very front of the auditorium. So everyone can see it. I'm just there the whole time during worship. Bill Johnson preached after that. And I'm like, I'm just up here shaking and baking. Like I can't really? get Really? You were shaking speaking the in, whole time? Spe uh, speaking in tongues, vibration going wow. through my body. There's no way I could get up. It was crazy. But the beautiful part was when God encounters us, it's not for no reason like there's right. a reason why he does it and so I had been really struggling with um, depression and just really bad thoughts and when I got off the ground I was set free and wow I was never the same never the so same so amazing yeah it was awesome wow well will you pray for us for that yes okay okay <laughs> okay yeah yeah Jesus we love you we love you we love you. And God, I thank you that you love to encounter us and you love to be with us and you love to fill us with your Holy Spirit because he's our helper and he's our counselor. So Jesus, I pray right now just for the baptism of your Holy Spirit over anyone who's watching, who's hungry for it and who wants it. God, touch them in dreams. Touch them through this video. Send a man or woman of God to lay hands on them, whatever it takes, God. But I thank you for encounter in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And with speaking in tongues, will that just happen sometimes, or? I mean, it could. We, like, it will just happen, and. It's going to happen to me, but it's like you can ask for it. 
because that's not right. everyone's story. So I can't say, yeah, it'll just happen when it happens because that's yeah. honestly, that's not everyone's story. Yeah. Um, so ask for it. Mm -hmm. Have someone pray for you to receive it who if they already speak in tongues have them pray for you mm -hmm. and believe in faith that you already have it Yeah, and then sometimes it's just as simple as just opening your mouth mm -hmm. And it might sound stupid and you might question like what is actually yeah. what is this this sounds stupid? Mm -hmm. I sound like a child and um, Babbling or yeah, something. but yeah. it's like just grow in it. Just keep doing it mm -hmm. and eventually it's gonna It'll just do it like yeah. where he'll just, yeah, I don't know how it all works. I, I can't, I don't know, but that's my, that's my, <laughs> my take on it. He'll do it. He'll just, he'll do, just it. do it. Yeah. That's my, my favorite prayer. Honestly. Um, I don't pray very fancy. Like I'm not like the most mm -hmm. articulate with words. So my favorite prayer is Jesus, just do it. Like yeah. do it. It's not hard for you. You know what I'm trying to say? Just do it. And mm -hmm. then he just does stuff and it's awesome. Aww, he does. Yeah. I love him. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. How did you know you were supposed to just go and travel to all these places with no plan of action? Obedience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I mean, this book, it takes place all over the world. I've yeah. lived a lot of places and traveled to a lot of places. And a lot of the times I did not have a plan. Mm -hmm. I might not have had a map. I might not have had a place to stay. But I just showed up mm -hmm. and saw what God would do. Um, so I, I honestly don't know that I was supposed to do it. I just know that I was being led by his spirit. And mm -hmm. even if I was wrong, cause I know that there's definitely times where I'm like, I don't know if I'm making the right choice and going here or whatever, but God loves that. I'm trying, like yeah. I'm being obedient to what mm -hmm. I feel like he's saying. And it aligns with scripture. Like yeah. I'm going out to all the nations. Like yeah. I'm I'm being obedient to what I think that I'm hearing. Um, so I would just trust him, and he would take care of me. In yeah. the in the meantime, he'd be like, maybe you mm -hmm. know, maybe this wasn't the right thing, but I'm still gonna take care of you and still gonna protect you. But most of the time, I was walking in his will. But I would feel it. I'm like, ooh, I know that this is yeah. not right. I yeah, feel it. you know. I know you it. You know. Yeah. And he'll take care of you if the Lord's calling you to do, yeah. to go all over the world like Shanna, yeah. you know? He will. Why do you think people would look so strangely at you when you would tell them that you're going to go again or to go out and travel? Yeah, so... Was it like people's faith wasn't there or what would you say, like, why were people doing that to you or why were you feeling that way? Yes, so I've been a lot of places and have done lots of mission type work or have just been obedient and I'm just like well this is what he said so I'm gonna go and mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I get there but I'm gonna be obedient mm -hmm. so people don't always understand that and that's okay it's true they don't um yeah it does uh, it's okay um some people just don't get it and I didn't always get it I'm like I have no idea why I'm doing this but I know it's God so I'd rather be obedient than not follow him so, yes. um, so what was the question exactly? Why do, oh, why do I think people, it was just, I think, lack of faith or just not understanding. Some people might not have had a relationship with the Lord and you can't expect them to understand when you are walking in, yeah. in the will of the Lord because mm -hmm. it, there's no grid for it. Yeah. Um, but, and sometimes I think people would get jealous too. Mm -hmm. um, definitely yeah. some jealousy or people thinking yeah. that I'm just running away from responsibility, mm -hmm. um, running away from problems or just people thought I was just getting it out of my system. <laughs> that was my favorite one. That would be the oh best. Oh my gosh. She's like, yeah, she's like, oh, following the Lord right now, whatever that means. And it, it's just a phase. She'll grow out of it. And I'm like, oh buddy, like it's <laughs> oh, only, buddy. it has only increased. And yeah. um, I just love him even more. It's not a phase. Jesus isn't a phase. He's a yeah. lifelong decision. It's so, so true. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Oh, I love that. Really, because I've experienced that too. There was a part in the book when you, I think you prayed, right? That Rome would be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then there was a part in the book shortly after that, the Lord literally shook Rome with an earthquake. Can you talk more about that? Sure. Yeah, so that was one of the places where the Lord was just like, just go. 
like just go and he made it so clear because I was like Jesus I feel crazy like you're mm -hmm. sending me to Rome for what like what am I doing and I really do feel very much called to Europe like my heart mm -hmm. burns for um, that continent I love Europe so I it's not a surprise that he would send me there, but I'm like, what is my purpose? And I didn't go into too much detail in the book of like mm -hmm. why he sent me there and what I was doing. Yeah. And it was very, um, it was like an intercession trip essentially. Like I believe that I'll do things in Rome one day mm -hmm. and uh, do some Ooh. stuff, whatever mm -hmm. that, I don't know, whatever he tells me, I just, I'll do it when he tells mm -hmm. me. But yeah, I, I just kind of went with like a little rolling backpack or a little rolling suitcase and a little backpack and just got on a plane. I didn't <laughs> oh, have much American. of a plan. I know. It's I, so American, I think. <laughs> I didn't have much of a plan to come back. Mm -hmm. I just kind of was like, well, I'm going to be obedient and I'll start a ministry here and I'll get planted and I'll worry about visas. God will make it happen. If it's him, he'll, he'll do it. So, um, yeah, after two weeks he told me to go home, but that's another story. But anyway, when That's I was cool. there, I was just uh, praying over the city and just believing that God was going to literally shake the nation with his presence and just, um, you know, break off religion and break off all that kind of, all that kind of stuff, um, pagan kind of beliefs. And so I was really praying into that, really interceding. And one of the things I would pray, I'm like, just shake the city, Lord, like just yeah. shake it. And because that was like the language that he put in me, I was praying wow. over the Colosseum. I'm like, shake this place, blah 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 blah. Yeah. And uh, wow. Yeah. And then in the middle of the night, it was. I mean, you can read about it in the book. Yeah. But essentially, an earthquake came and it literally so shook crazy. the city. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is real. Like this mm -hmm. really happened. And um, I, I was definitely afraid. Like it was the mm -hmm. fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, whoa, I believe I, it. I'm I believe. not just like, I'm not just here just walking around and praying. Like our prayer is, they're so effective. Like they're mm -hmm. literally touching the heart of God and he moves upon our prayer. So I'm like little me, little five foot four, like hundred pound girl. <laughs> I'm like, shake the city Lord. And he's yeah. like, you know, shakes it. I'm like, oh my Shaking God, it, yeah. like he really hears me. And yeah. so, it, yeah, it, and I'm a nobody, you know what I mean? Like I'm literally just an, a girl from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not, you know, some big name speaker mm -hmm. and they're telling these stories on stage. I'm just like, I'm literally just a nobody girl from Pennsylvania who wrote a book, you know, but our prayer is just as effective as anybody else's it's just about relationship like believing him that when we pray something like if it's his will he's gonna do it like yeah. he's gonna be on it so yeah that's wow. pretty much it i was just connected to the that. father and hurt, hurt his heart and he did it i partnered with him yeah i love that and it's as simple as that when he says something just partnering with and believing and he'll do it yeah he does it that's like the biggest thing because mm -hmm. sometimes i think he'll say something and then we feel that pressure like we have to do that huge thing but like he's the one that did it he's the one that put the language yeah. in your heart amen remember when you were in israel for the second time and you had the dream that paralleled the song of songs in chapter five that the table had been prepared and chandelier that hung from the tree you said that the jesus was revealing the deeper things mm -hmm. of intimacy to you can you talk about that what do you mean the deeper things like the meat versus milk or like what what do you yeah mean so um, I'm a dreamer I've had mm -hmm. a lot of dreams uh, with Jesus sometimes he's in them sometimes I just know he's present sometimes it's just a dream from the Lord and over the years I would have dreams where um, there'd be a tree and there'd be a, a little rope swing and he'd push me on the on the rope swing it was my favorite place but in my I had a dream and the rope swing wasn't there and there's a table underneath with a chandelier and table set for two and I'm like huh like this seems very romantic like what is this and I knew it was about pursuit and I believe that it's it, it symbolized the change of season mm -hmm. and so God desires to walk with us. You know, he wants to be our friend. He's mm -hmm. our father. He's He's everything to us. Mm -hmm. But there's also deeper, deeper intimacy where Jesus will, he calls us away and he wants to be with us and he pursues mm -hmm. us. 
and he draws us into his heart closer to him and so I feel like that was just a transition in season of him really drawing me closer to him and being like nope come sit at my table like we're gonna we're gonna have some serious talks like we're gonna get really we're really really gonna get to know each other and because he wants relationship yeah and so like if you think about it with the disciples like Jesus Mm -hmm. knew you know he had his he had um his 70 men that he would send out and then he had his 12 and then you know the multitudes would follow him and um but then he had his 12 and they were pretty close then he had his three and they're very close but then there was john john the beloved Mm -hmm. so and they were super tight like super tight and so there it kind of just shows this um closeness that we can have with the lord where it's like i don't want to just follow him i don't want to just be a multitude that follows him around but i truly want to be like the one who gets to lay you know your ear on his chest at the Mm -hmm. at the dinner table and just rest in him so i believe that there is a we're called to be the bride right so it's a bridal realm of intimacy that we can enter into with the lord Mm -hmm. where he teaches us to be be his bride and to abide in him and so that's what I think that I was talking, or that's what I know that I was talking about in the book when talking about the deeper things of his affections, mm-hmm. um, learning to be the bride, so yeah. preparing, preparing myself. Is there anything practical that you can share, like that we can do to like prepare to be the bride that you might, in your experience, what you could share, anything? Of like what we would, what we can do to prepare. It's really simple you know? as that. Yeah. Posture of our heart. Um, I don't. I mean, there's lots of things that we could do. Like yes, pray. Yes, seek the Lord. Yes, get in a secret place. Go to church. Be in community. But it's also allowing Him to refine us. Mm-hmm. Um, tasting and seeing that He's really good, and just allowing ourselves to become more like Him. Mm -hmm. Um, and preparing ourselves that way just to because the more that you spend time with him the more that you're going to become like him yeah so I would say that that's the most practical thing just be with him Mm -hmm. and there doesn't have to be an agenda yeah you don't have to go and spend time with him to get something out of him yeah you just spend time with him because he's worthy Mm -hmm. and then that rubs off on you and you become just like him so Yeah. yeah I love that. It's true. Mm-hmm. We can all do that. We can do that, you know? Yeah. So the Lord told you to pray over all the fountains in all of Rome. And if you've been to Europe, in general, I lived in Spain. And so there's lots of fountains and, and lots of parks. But I'm assuming it sounds like Rome is very similar. Thousands. It might be even more. It sounds like there's even more fountains. I don't know. There sounds like there's more fountains in Rome. So they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so... The Lord just told her to pray over the fountains. And she's like, why am I doing this, right? Like, mm-hmm. and felt so crazy. Yeah, what had happened was he told me to go and pray over fountains. And mm-hmm. I'm like, there's so many. This is ridiculous. Like, I can't possibly do this. Like, I'll have to be here for, like, months to, like, mm-hmm. pray over every single one. And so I was like, there's got to be just one. Where's just the one that you need mm-hmm. me to really pray over? Like, what are you trying to show me? I don't get it. And so it took, I think I was, I was there for two weeks, about two weeks. And I think it was like toward the end of the trip, maybe like day nine. And, um, he finally led me to the fountain and, um, he had me praying Ezekiel 47 over every single one that I Mm -hmm. would see. And when I got to this fountain, it literally had written on it, Ezekiel 47, and I was like, no way. Because I knew when I saw it that it was it, you know. Yeah. And then it had that inscribed on it. And uh, the Lord spoke to me through it. But, yeah. Yeah, and so I have gone through seasons like this. And um, just feeling like it's like, whoa. Like, you, like you're like you walking around in the dark in a huge, like, million dollar, like a mansion. And you can't see, you can't see, you know, where you're going. But the Lord will make it so apparent what he wants to do. He's not going to leave you walking around blindly, just like you kind of felt like you were walking around blindly, but he made it so apparent. The literal fountain that he was bringing you to was everything that he was saying, Ezekiel 47, and he made it so apparent. And I feel like this book was like, just like a lot of hope in like a season where you just feel like you can't see and there's no way that you can see. 
in the Lord, in the spirit realm, is what I mean. I can see, I can see you, but you know what I mean. So you can can't feel like feeling like you can't see in the spirit realm, where the Lord will like will make it very clear, and it was just like a lot of hope. So Amen. yeah, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there anything else you want to share with us, or any thoughts? Um, like potential readers or anything that yeah. you want to share or I mean if you're interested go and read it I do have to say that like I've read my own book because you know I edited it <laughs> so I've had to read it several times and every time I I get amazed by the Lord because it's not just like come and listen read my story you know mm -hmm. like I have something great but it's like it's literally so many just things that the Lord shares and it's not just for me but it's for anybody who reads it and I get wrecked when I read my own book because the Lord's on it yeah and there's just so many things that he's spoken that how can you not be touched by God when he speaks yeah so yeah so if you want to be encouraged I'm not just saying this because I wrote it but like if you really want to be encouraged um and hear what God can sound like yeah this has a lot of what he sounds like yeah and so and I'll put the link in the description below so that you can go right to it and it's called Shaba letters writing to an invisible God by Shanna Armbrus yes <laughs> you can get it on Amazon yes yeah where else can um you get? Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. um and then eventually I'm gonna get up a website but like I said I don't really I don't like marketing so I do I have do. a web <laughs> yeah she's Just really kidding. good at it um, I do have a website, so shabaletters.com. Mm -hmm. It's more so a blog right now, but there's a link to where you can buy it. Eventually, yeah, you can that. buy it through yeah. me directly, but right now, I'm just not doing that. But and eventually. I'll put, I'll put that link for her website as well cool. down below. So, thank you, Shanna, for sharing. Thank I you. Really this was so this. fun. Yeah, and it was fun to, like, go through it again. Mm -hmm. Even though I had read it, like, it was fun to really go through it and... Yeah. talk about it more and get kind of more like in your mind kind of perspective while you're writing it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and until next time bye bye